Dan, good to see you again. Another great day in Scottsdale. Here we are at Pod Populi. Downtown Scottsdale was two really interesting guests. Now, we had them on before on Sugar Crush, and they were talking about their new company, MedWatch, which is a phenomenal technology to monitor glucose using AI. Our discussion is going to go far and wide today. This is the new technology that's going to solve the problem that's plaguing America, diabetes. I can't wait to hear Sam and Mike tell us about their story. Good afternoon, everybody. Dan Barnard here on my Capital Fit podcast at the podcast studios, Old Town Scottsdale. I'm here with uh, my esteemed colleague, uh, colleague, my, my co my, my I like, host, colleague. I, like, I esteem this. I think the esteemed like colleague. That. Yeah, it sounds yeah. very distinguished. Yeah. You are uh, the Dr. Uh, R- Richard Rick. That's Jacobi. the official name. Yeah, yeah Dr. Rick Richard Jacobi. Jacobi. Yeah, yeah. Who just uh, la- you're launching an academy? We'll talk about that on my show here. But you know, our show talks about capital uh, startups, how to help startups grow, uh, how to be be fit mental physical fitness so we we cover a lot of subjects here in this in this show and today in the studio for the second time we have Mike Moore CEO of MedWatch and the chief operating officer COO uh, Sam Zaidspinner they're here in the studio with Rick uh, to give us some updates right Mike welcome uh, thanks Dan it's a pleasure to be here again hey, Rick Not- fantastic to see you as well Really enjoyed playing pickleball with both of you guys together, along with Sam this morning. We did. We had a great time. Sam, you were killing it out there. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Well, let's let's start fun. with your uh, your serve. What's with the spin going on? This there? backhanded oh, spin okay. serve. What, is that even legal? You got You got to have upward swing. I've been told as long as you're below uh-huh. the belly and it's but an it's upward got like, swing. It's got like a three foot. Uh, it slide goes right going. to left like a yeah. curveball. Like, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's out. And it, it was right in. I'm like that. You really were kind of count on making me upset today. Yeah, I kind of count on getting at least one or two points. <laughs> you did again and then, until people realize, oh, that bounces differently yes. the way that it normally does. But then you figure it out and uh-huh. get it no, back. So, it well, it's all about figuring out the science, uh, right? Absolutely. And absolutely. That's what you guys do. So well, maybe the pickleball had influence on your sensor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, exactly. Well, I think we had a successful dinner last night at Morton. Oh, that was great, wasn't it? it? Yeah. And we were experiencing the carnivore diet. Yes, we were. You talk about on your new academy. So Yes. Well, you know, I'm a carnivore. Yes. Um, but I never really had a way to measure what I'm eating. Exactly. So that's why I'm so excited about this company. Because everybody has an opinion. You know, Brussels sprouts are this, or your meat eaters or herbivores don't eat eggs. But we don't have the ability to measure that. And this company, I'm really excited at what your progress is, and I, that's what this is about. And our meeting last night was about you know bringing out the new book, listening to your advances on your technology. So this is this is really great, Mike. And uh, we got to get you out more on the pickleball. Okay. <laughs> well, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And life, you know, as Dan says, what, without your health, what good is your wealth? And you're going to be a rich guy, so you better stay shape, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think the audience in our dinner event last night was quite impressed with uh, the test results that you, you showed. So, and just the progress that from, from when you were first in the studio, uh, continuing to raise capital, grow the company, hire, hire some key people, uh, and, and really just execute on, on your vision to become the first continuous glucose monitoring wearable device using AI. Mike, tell me, tell me more. Well, it's uh, real exciting. It, our data is fantastic. It, we're well on our way to meeting the FDA requirements. And uh, as Rick was uh, just alluding to with the diet, you know, there's so many different opinions on, on different foods, and it's nice to have a sensor so the science and the data can speak for itself. Right. Well said. That is exactly. so important. Yeah, I think we're going to solve the debate between the carnivores and the herbivores. So we should have a MedWatch challenge. What's the right answer? Let's do the challenge. We'll try to encourage everybody to let the data speak for itself. 
and and that's science, and that's what it's supposed to be. Now, got to start with opinions, obviously, anecdotal evidence, and then you put it to the scientific test. You have that platform. So why don't you go into detail how you gather that information, how you display that information, and how you collate that into a meaningful solution to this horrible diabetic problem we have in the United States. Well, it, when you're wearing our device, well, we've got over a, a dozen different sensors in our device. It's a very rich data set. And we collect all that data, we process it through our neural net, then we can take and push that data to your uh, smartphone. So you push it to the smartphone, and how is that displayed on this, on the smartphone? It, we have our apps that have been built for Android and iOS, and so we have our own interface. It's all displayed right, right there. So let's say I ate an apple, and Dan ate an apple. Not the same apple, Dan. Okay. <laughs> right. But what, what do you, I, I wish I had brought, brought that prop well, for had, the dinner last night. I was going to take a bite of an apple, by I, the way. I thought about that, but I forgot. Oh, by the I, way, I that, you played Imagine. That was, that was quite uh, impressive. Yeah, and everybody close your eyes. Yeah. Imagine a world where you can have a device. Well, you have a device that measures all your... All your measurements from oh, yeah. glucose it's, to your cortisol levels, hormones. But the, way, but, the way, but the way you did it, it yeah. was almost like grace oh, before eating. Yeah. But in a modern sense, and you know, in my new book, I'm talking about the urban carnivore. Right. And maybe that is the grace. In other words, you got to think about what you're eating because yeah. that keeps us alive. And you put that imagine, and we all closed our eyes yeah. as, as we were praying. Yeah. So that's uh, <laughs> really that was uh, so I called you, you know, Father Dan. Um, <laughs> but it, it's a very important message because yeah. people just eat, you know, right. fast food. They right. don't think about it, right? And they're sick. And this is a reflection of our society stopping, reflecting, yeah, and measuring, and and having gratitude for what we have. Yeah. It's a really important message. It goes for, well beyond the science. Appreciate it, Sam. Yeah, so we're, we're really delighted to be aligned with you, Dr. Jacoby, and really your message that you're trying to get out there about really the uh, ill effect of such a poor diet. I mean, you know the science behind it. We're simply developing the sensor that helps people to learn and learn, the, learn how their decisions about lifestyle, about eating, about diet, about exercise, they learn it, and, and it's pretty cool. So first of all, we're delighted to be aligned with you. We're excited, really. Our mission as a as a two as you know between what you're trying to do with the book and what we're trying to do as a company is really to improve health and well, uh, get people to realize this is we need to you need to make a change. Well, it's it, it's a great mission, and the Battle of the Nile that I tried to put that story together. And you're a Navy guy, right? Yes. I, so what what did you think of that? I really enjoyed the the story. Uh, it's. Uh, a little bit of history other people should be aware of. Yeah, and then we had this movie, Napoleon, right. but he doesn't talk about that battle, apparently. I haven't seen the movie, but he talks about all his other battles. He was in Egypt. But the point I was trying to make, there's the great, uh, consider one of the greatest naval battles of all time, because the Napoleon's fleet is there. They didn't measure high tide, low tide accurately enough and the fleet was destroyed. But at the same time, the savants that I pointed out, Fourier, which is the math behind your technology, yeah. and Fourier and the chemistry, and then there was the Rosetta Stone also discovered there. And there were 162 savants. There were science after science after science. And, and I was talking to Dan about this. Why did that happen? And where and why in that spot? Because we had 162 people for three years having a conversation. That's what we're having here. Yeah, right. And that's all it is. Now, lectures are good, but you don't get a, a chance to talk back and mm -hmm. forth in this point and that point from the finance to the way you do the FDA studies. I mean, it's all interrelated. And it's in the conversation. And this, to me, is a... Um, battle of the Nile against diabetes in the United States. That's well and, said, Rick. Wow. 
Yeah, and we have well said amazing amount of cost that's going on in the United States. And back to Zuckenmiller that we talked about, and he is a economist, and he says within ten years, all the money that's collected by the federal government in taxes will go to entitlements, which means Medicare and Medicaid, and most of that will go to Big Pharma to solve a problem that we're talking about, and it doesn't have to happen. So you're at that forefront, and as a Navy guy, why don't you get a little background on your Navy history? I think that's an interesting. Well, I don't know if I really want to talk about all my <laughs> Naval history here, but I am a combat veteran who was in Operation Praying Manus in 88 against the Iranians. Uh, Operation Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and moving forward through the, the second conflict uh, with Iraq and Afghanistan. So, been around the block. Sounds like it. So, we obviously have good science in our military, and it is about information and is deploying the tactics based on that information. Information's key to everything. Everything. And Napoleon. Thanks you for that comment. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> he lost the fleet, but he's he escaped. Um, and you said that you were in London, and you saw the Rosetta Stone. I, I did. It's in the um, Na London Museum of Natural History, or the Natural History Museum there. See, and that's amazing because the French discovered it and deciphered it, but the English won. They got the Rosetta Stone, and it's still in the British Museum. I'm going to have to talk to the French. This, this, is, uh, this is a piece of history. That's amazing. I, I'm sure they'll be complaining, but uh, I don't think the Brits will give it up. Yeah, and when you look at the – and the size is like the size of a suitcase, not a big – No, no, it's uh, about five feet high. Five it, feet it, high? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty good size. Like, can you imagine that they – deciphered those three languages that's amazing yeah it is yeah and champion did that he spoke 15 languages so it's about language that's that's science it's communication it's um an amazing story that that happened and so now you are the savants yes solving the problem it, you know it's interesting uh, the rosetta stone helped um uh, um people decipher hieroglyphics, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But now AI is being used on some of these undiscovered languages to interpret them. And so AI is extremely critical to what we do. And it's funny talking about languages, how crucial it is to uh, uh, decipher some of these lost languages. Wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah, but this, this, is, this is really interesting. So the metaphor of the Rosetta Stone is um, germane to AI. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, Dan, what I do think you think it's relevant to what you're where you're going? I see the connection to what we're trying to do overall. It's really un, un solving the code is what we talk about. It's really well, that it's that, really debugging. It's uh, we talked about, and then it, it becomes a language to know how your food and your exercise actually what it how how it interprets and how it turns into a, a book of your life essentially. And uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. One of my, my uh, things that's it's impacted my life serving in this company because uh, I'm wearing CGMs now for for about six to eight months. I always have two or three on me because we're testing ours, we're looking at others, and uh, it's changed my life. And that's really I'm I'm exactly like we talk about the fact that there's 37 million with diabetes and type one and type two, but the people that we really want to get to with your book and what you're trying to promote is is certainly the people with diabetes, but really it's about catching people, educating and deciphering the code earlier in life to learn that, hey, when I eat when I eat meat, when I eat lower fat, when I eat lower carbs, when I eat this set, that that actually keeps a lower overall glucose level for the whole day. And when I exercise, I play pickleball for two hours at Dan's friend's house. The next morning, my glucose is a little bit lower than it is on other days. So it's about game. It's, it becomes a game of actually learning what works and actually what keeps you flat. And the idea is the real idea is get people earlier in life, people like me, who actually isn't diagnosed with uh, diabetes or t but I'm, but I'm but I feel stronger knowing that I'm now making changes that will essentially avoid the things you talk about in your book. Yeah, I think probably 
looking into the future, everybody will have a sensor on them to measure what they're eating. Diabetes is not just um, sugar, elevated sugar and insulin problem. It affects every disease. So the nature of my book, what I'm trying to say in the new book, Unglued, is that MS, autism, Alzheimer's, they're all manifestations of sugar. They're, they're the ones we really want to look at. Now, let's t- talk about autism. Autism, these kids are born into our culture. And I, my way of thinking, autism is a pre-diabetic, or excuse me, it's a preconception problem. So I work with a fellow by the name of John Stone out of Stanford as well. And he taught me that concept. It's a preconception. So it's an epigenetic problem. And this, this is why your technology could capture this. If you're, if you're planning a, a child, you want to be absolutely metabolically pure before that act is consumed because you're going to change the genes of the progeny of that event. And there's good literature Dating back, I, I read this article in Scientific America in 2000, there were 16 kids per 10,000 births. Today it's one in 20. And they were talking about, now they were embryologists, they were talking about a protein that was not placed on day 22, roughly, after, after conception. That's three weeks. Now, you don't know what you were eating to change that genetic outcome and if you had known that, you would not have eaten sugar prior to that event. And now you're, you're, you're left with a child who is permanently involved with a speech problem for the main part, but there's obviously a spectrum. So you, could, you should have that sensor that you have developed oh, just for just about everybody. Rheumatoid arthritis, Alzheimer's, doesn't matter. Alzheimer's, same thing, it's just diff- different nerve, in my opinion. So when I look at your technology, I see a huge uh, following, not just quote-unquote diabetics, the pre-diabetic, which is rheumatoid arthritis. It's all these itises. So I want to thank you. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here um, and, and discuss this. You know, there's a common thread through everything we're saying uh, is basically decoding or deciphering stuff, whether it's the Rosetta Stone or lost languages or using AI to do our signal interpretation, et cetera, or all the work you're doing, decoding sugar and how it impacts all these. That's uh, decoding sugar. That's That could be a that, maybe that title be of the a, book. <laughs> maybe it should Holy be. Holy mackerel. Um, that is true because it's information. It's a language the language of biochemistry and epigenetics. And so AI can unravel that, wow, in real time. And this takes on another dimension to the book and to, your, and to your mission. So it's a decoding as opposed to encoding proper genetics. Whoa, we're getting deep here, guys. We better run out and play a little yeah. pickleball I, again. We, I, I think Mike is um, channeling one of the 162 Savant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, so, you are too. You're channeling. We talked about this. Ben, well, ben Franklin. Yeah, Ben's my buddy. You know, yeah. I sat in his chair for four years. It, um, he was a fantastic person. I, I, I love his history and all that he's contributed to science. Wow, it, it, that's me too. So the first hospital built in the United States, 1751, Ben Franklin. That's the hospital I first trained at. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, and everybody thinks of uh, lightning, and he's done so much more. I'm the guy. The golf stream. Okay, I'm the guy that told him, "Don't put that key on the kite screen." And what are you doing? <laughs> he didn't ben? listen. <laughs> he didn't listen to me. And uh, but he built that hospital. You know what? He you know, most amazing person this country has ever had. When you know, I mean, I like Tesla and all that sort of thing. But Ben Franklin, 1751. He tells his friend to go to Europe and go to see this guy, John Hunter, in Scotland. And he had this amazing new technology for medicine in that day. He was dissecting giraffes, can you imagine this, in his home. 
and dogs and cats and whatever, and trying to figure out the decoding anatomy, basically. And his theory was bloodletting. And they brought that theory back to Philadelphia in 1751, and that's what they did. That's how, uh, by the way, um, uh, George Washington had a fever. Yeah. <laughs> they exaggerated him. They fixed him. Um, so, you know, eventually all bleeding stops, as the joke goes. Um, but that's how he died, um, by exsanguination. But a lot of these people who they did blood let on, like congestive failure, heart failure, they lowered the amount of blood and edema in the system. So it did work. But that's science. Then you started measuring it. And that was prior to the germ theory, by the way. Well, you know, it's interesting you, you talk about uh, reducing the volume of blood, but um, CHF is uh, affected by water retention, correct? Correct. And we had discussed just last night about sugar and with water retention, et cetera. So maybe you can oh, expand yeah. On, yeah. on the that water for the audience. Well, I, I told that story last night on my, <laughs> my camel ride. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So for the audience here, so I was in Jordan, and we were on an ex. There was an expedition kind of from Dartmouth to go to the pyramids. We went to Jordan, and they asked anybody want to ride a camel through the desert to go to a Bedouin camp. I, I raised my hands, and another person. So there's two of us out of a hundred. So I get on this camel, and it, it kind of looks like Arizona because it was desert. And so we're loping along, as the cowboy term goes. And the guide, he looks up at me. And he gestured with his hands like, you know, you want to move a little faster? And I, I gestured back with the reins, and I went like that. And that camel, he saw it. He said, oh, you want to go faster? <laughs> okay, cowboy, yeah. here we go. And this, I, I've never been on an animal that fast. I've ridden horses fast, but whoa, this is like twice as fast as a horse and twice as high, but smoother because those feet are so like big marshmallows. And I'm just starting to get into that. And, okay, this is not that bad. bad. I'm going like crazy. And I'm grabbing the hump <laughs> to hang on. And then I'm thinking, oh, my God, where are we going? This animal knows where it's going. It's going to get there as fast as he can. It's going to stop on a dime, which he did. And I almost fell off and I grabbed the hump. So it's a story last night. Living in the desert, where does water come from for animals? Because I Dan, we, you and I, we play pickleball, golf, yeah. uh, tennis. Uh, we don't drink that much water. Right. So diet has a lot to do with that. If you eat a lot of carbohydrates, you're going to want to drink a lot of water and you're going to gain weight. Mm -hmm. Just a fit, heart failure to your point. But when you eat a fat-based diet and, and carnivore, you don't really require a lot of water. And those camels go forever. Yeah. They have that... That hump is fat, and you make water out of fat, and that fat is CO2 and H2O, simple chemistry. We're I love your term. We're decoding those, those phenomena here with your technology because it is a language. And, um, yeah, there's all well, inner. Yeah, Sam, talk about some of the updates you mentioned last night during our dinner at, at Morton's. Uh, I think some of the folks that were there, some doctors were, quite impressed who had uh, actually invested in their look, refer you to other, you know, potential uh, folks to, to, uh, yeah, well, first of know. all, Dan, thank you for really helping and assembling the audience and hosting the event. It was excellent, freshly done. And thank you. We appreciate uh, your networking. Uh, we have a, over half of our investors, I believe, Mike, are physicians. Is that correct? I believe so. And the reason why, as we present, we're really just not really, uh, we really just keep our head down and execute and hit our milestones. And what we presented is uh, yeah. last night we got results from our second study and we're working on a broader demographic of people with type right. 1 and type 2. So yeah. we're excited about it. And uh, under a non-disclosure, we're happy to go into all the details about it. But uh, yeah. we're just, we're key. We just hit a key milestone. We have our head down now going to our next study, which is going to be even bigger and broader. We're just committed as a company to meeting FDA accuracy requirements and uh, keep yeah. driving forward. So, And then everybody in the audience at our guests last night were able to actually see your newest, latest, greatest version of this 
Yeah, yeah. So as we progress through our studies, we iterate on the design, we get smarter, we get, we learn about how to get the correlation tighter at the end of the day. You got to correlate really well. And that that's how you build an AI methodology, a neural network. And uh, yeah, we're making great progress. And every uh, iteration of the sensor and of the algorithm gets better and better. So we're it's, really excited about our progress. And yeah, we appreciate the, uh, as you said, several investors on that our st- shareholders were in the audience last night, and uh, we appreciate them believing in us and uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, trust having confidence in our teams to continue to drive forward. It's a compelling story, you know. And oh, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So I think you you would relate to Zuckerberg. You have a name that's similar to that, you know. I guess some Z's <laughs> going on. There. I like anyone. Stanley, anyone who has a Z in their name. Yeah, I think it's, like it's, it's, it's and it's Druckenmiller. Druckenmiller, uh, and um, he yes. may be um, you may be brothers from a different mother. <laughs> might you know? be, might okay. be. Yeah. yeah. So science, I I just wanted yeah. to tell you how happy I am that you can measure what I'm saying, which is. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. it's really it's really difficult to explain that because you really can't see what I'm seeing as I tried to explain that last night with that slide in Mayo. Yes, but well, it is true. You 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 have to visualize that, and data is the visualization of the mathematics behind an idea, and that's what you're doing. And that's data that's, is a visualization of the idea. It's it's amazing. Yeah. So what, and then what is MedWatch going to do with the data? So we're going to improve health of uh, millions of people. Well, you are and going to it. bend the curve, and you're going to save this. You're going to save the country yeah. because back to Zuckerberg. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, we're done in ten years. We got to speed this up. So, tell your audience how we are. We trying to speed this up? Is it a money raise? It's not a science problem. Right. We have the science. It's just getting this money. Yeah properly positioned. Yeah, I mean, the real secret of what we're doing is we've got an incredible team. Mike and I have assembled an incredible team that is committed to this mission, and they have the expertise and background to and experience to do this and get it done, and we set an environment to collaborate. And when at the end of the day, when they say, when we build this into a huge enterprise, we're going to really, it's been that. It's the culture that Mike set from the beginning that we're really committed to a mission. So um, the... Uh, Mike, you want to add to that, the Rick's question? Yeah. Um, well, I think he covered it pretty well. And, you know, it, it, we're, we're just really excited to be able to empower people all over the world to take control of, of their health. And I'm excited about everything that you're teaching people about sugar and, and seeing the correlations um, between glucose and a lot of the other problems. And so that educating those individuals that is game changing. Yeah. It's been a long path back to Philadelphia, back to Ben Franklin. <laughs> That's where it started. And when I was working on PKU and I just realized I was feeding these poor little rats, a chow, which is not something they normally would eat. And then looking at their brain metabolism and their amino acids, when you get down to the basics is mathematics, it's Fourier. And here we are. Yeah, that rat was so big. I thought that sucker was a rabbit. <laughs> it was huge. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, goodness, Rick. Well, again, your your book is coming out. You have a new program. Your uh, carnivore diet is on going to be an online course. Yep. Mm-hmm. You're building that out with uh, or your 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 uh, marketing and video professional Daryl Stern Stern Marketing. He's put that together yes he's done so. he's done a great great service um and i was just thinking with with the um with your product as we get a little further along because i think that needs to be caught taught in the course because that's what people are going to say yeah, that's my point bring yeah. it up yeah, yeah. and at we'll, some point we'll be utilizing that watches technology oh yeah into yeah. your in your course and yeah. you have so many other companies as well and we'll talk about that on the podcast but blink right. you know i love blink's blink concept frames. yeah and and the nitric oxide it goes on and on well and, and, and like, like you said medwatch is the platform on which all of these other ancillary right medical technologies that, be, yeah but that might be a message for you i i believe there's um what i learned there's about 300 people in this space not in your particular um device but 
that are, would be ancillary to your platform. And that's, that's amazing. Like, like the Avacyn we just looked at, Avacyn is a great adjunct connector to your platform. There's right. 300 of those companies. So we really should look at those and get these people over and conversing. Yeah, I mean... That would be good. That's why, you know, Apple comes out, starts as a c computer, right? And now... They have apps. For, 40 years later, now it's a platform. It's a platform. I, that's where I... Don't you guys, Sam, don't you? I mean, you've, you've, you've been involved in hundreds of companies, Sam. Why are you so excited about being here? And you know, you joined the company earlier this year, and and uh, I've just been impressed with you mm -hmm. and your leadership and... And just working with you has been just a just a breeze. Uh, yeah, thanks, Dan. But uh, yeah, it's all about impact. I mean, we're going to have impact on healthcare. We're going to yeah. we're going to really that's really the focus of it. You stay right. focused on building the right. We're really committed as a team to not just building a medical device. We're building right. a tool that people are going to love right. because it's going to make them healthier. Yeah. And if you face, stay focused on that impact, it's going to really improve lives then everything else falls out. So yeah. that's been, that's one of the secrets is you focus on the purpose of what you're doing and everything else kind of falls in place. Well, I think there's a future book coming out here in this. It sounds like a, like a, a future yeah. wearable measuring yeah. book. It's kind of part of the transhumanism movement. There's a big controversy of pluses and minuses of that. But when you enhance the human experience, oh, yeah. you're, it's technology. Right. Uh, and this certainly, the wearables, the sensors, the data, people who don't espouse this data are going to be left behind. And now with AI, you know, like it or not like it, if you don't use it, I mean, you're going to be an aborigine on this one. Yeah. This, is, this is an evolving <laughs> species here. Well, this is an evolving, evolving story from where MedWatch started to where they are today to what I predict have nothing I can, you know, you know, it's interesting. I, I tend to downplay things because I, I got to thread the needle, if you will, uh, of running a company and protecting our IP and our roadmap uh, with the message we would like to share of what we're developing and how game changing it's going to be because it's way beyond the glucose. And, and it's really exciting to see some of these other companies that are contributing to the overall health of individuals. There's really a, a, a sea change of things coming down the, the pipe uh, that's really going to help a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Couldn't and I appreciate you guys educating. Them. Oh, yeah. This is, this is timely. It's needed. But that's America right there. You know, we got the crisis. No one can solve in government. They're running around like crazy. Let's right. ration everything, right? That's right. what they do. Yeah. And then here's a company, you know, you joined it, you formed it, yep. you're funding it. I'm just articulating it, shall we say. Right. And here's the solution. That's what America's about. Yep. But we have just this negative, negative stuff that comes out of Washington. Oh, it's not solvable. We're going to have to cut Medicare's funding back, this, that, and everything. No, we just need this. This is, this is it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing uh, hardly, uh, hardly anything that's unsolvable. You just have to have the will to do it. And, totally. And, <laughs> you know, it, you solve somebody else's problem, well, you, you're taken away from somebody else that's benefiting off of those problems. Oh, so, I, I think but, that's the title of the show. It's MedWatch. Um, the will to change the medical model. Well, the, that's, that's, the, that's, I mean, that's the free market. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. Risk capital. Right. Put money in behind yeah. an idea, form a great idea with a great team, execute. You said all the right things. Yeah. It's going to sure. happen. It is happening. Well, this has been another wonderful episode, Rick, clearly. Well, thank you, Dan, with for your, bringing it together. Well, you just bring so much to the conversation and the, the equation of every show, and I really appreciate you being the host. We're going to grab some lunch here, get you guys back in your airplanes, oh, yes. back home. Right. And hopefully I'll, I'll see you next week in yes. Las Vegas for the A4M conference and the uh, Alternative Investing Forum conference as well there. Yeah. So, Rick, you're, you'll be attending and speaking as well. So yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to that. Sam, uh, as well, keep up the great work and smashing that pickleball I will. We'll around. Come and back next time with a few different serves for you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't doubt that. I can't wait. 
Fantastic. I well, have guys, a big, a big yeah. uh, basket of balls, and I'll go and just grill them until I get it. When I work on a new serve, that's what I'll do. I'll come back with a new one next time. Sounds okay. great. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.